When you're developing an indie game, it can be challenging creating levels and experiences that provide the perfect level of difficulty. If something's too easy, it'll be boring, but make it too hard and players might get frustrated or just quit. Finding that balance is tough, considering that people of all skill levels will be playing. The approach that lots of games have done is having difficulty options when you start the game. This helps because players generally have an idea of how skilled they are, so at least they can put themselves in a category that they think is appropriate. But even still, it's not always easy to tell which option is best for you. For me personally, I like choosing hard difficulties, but some games take it too far and I end up frustrated. So sometimes I cautiously choose normal instead, and I end up with a less enjoyable experience for myself. For my game, I'd like to avoid making players choose their difficulty. There is something really satisfying about a game that doesn't have any difficulty settings at all. It makes the experience feel definitive, and if it's challenging like Elden Ring for example, getting good and overcoming the really difficult challenges feels like more of an accomplishment, and when it's the exact same challenge for everyone, it feels all the more real. The problem is, some people just aren't capable of overcoming these challenges. Many people have disabilities that make these challenges too overwhelming and many people don't play video games often enough to understand the controls and mechanics to play properly. Lots of games understand this, one of my favorites being Celeste. This game is really hard, but in the menu there are assist options, which let the player adjust certain aspects of the game to make it easier to play. This keeps the developer's intended experience intact, but now more people are able to complete the game thanks to these options. My game absolutely could benefit from something like this, but similar to regular difficulty options, it still requires a player to manually set this. What I'm actually trying to achieve is adaptive difficulty. Or in other words, the player never sets the difficulty themselves. Instead, the game adjusts its difficulty automatically based on how well the player performs. I first got this idea from Resident Evil 4. In that game, if you die or get hit too many times, the game makes the enemies a bit easier, or spawns fewer of them. And if the player is doing really well, things will get tougher. But the game changes things without telling you, so it feels authentic the entire way through. A setup like this seems perfect for my game. There's no need to choose a difficulty option. Instead, the game starts off at a medium difficulty, and if the player is able to beat certain parts without dying, that difficulty increases to something more challenging. And if the player struggles to get past a certain part, that difficulty decreases. I really think the key to making this work is keeping all of this secret from the player so that they never know any difficulty scaling is happening at all. I know I'm kind of ruining that plan by making this video, so I'm going to kindly ask that you forget everything I've said after this video is over. But now that I have this goal of adaptive difficulty, implementing it is its own challenge. Or at least, it would have been if I wasn't thinking ahead on this. Last video I talked about rewriting the enemy code from scratch, and while I was doing this, I made it a priority to keep the code as modular as possible. All that I mean by this is that the code for one enemy can be easily reused for other enemies. And since this is the case, it makes creating new enemies much easier. For example, if I wanted to make a brand new enemy, I first gather the sprites I want to use where each row represents a different animation. Then, to make it behave like an enemy, I just need to define this list of stats, where the different combination of values results in unique behavior. This process is also going to be how mod support works, where it's simply defining values like the enemy's health, what behavior it has while idle, movement speed, hitbox dimensions, and then you can define what kind of attack it has and change all kind of values there. This whole setup works for bosses as well, like the electric boss for example. This boss cycles through several different attacks, and this is done by providing a list of attack definitions in this config. Even better, the boss has multiple phases, so this attack list changes depending on which phase of the fight you're on. This foundation for enemy creation will make the development process so much easier for myself, modders, and also, it's what makes the adaptive difficulty system possible. Since each enemy is defined by these different values, it's perfectly reasonable to create multiple different versions of this enemy, one for each difficulty level. To make an enemy more difficult, I can increase the speed values, reduce the time between attacks, give it more health, change how many projectiles it shoots, there really are a lot of options. And as the player goes through the game, I can sneakily change which version of the enemy to spawn, so hopefully the challenge is always at an appropriate level. I'm always open to feedback on this, so if you have any suggestions for me to consider, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.